You're listening to the New Old Heads podcast, shot live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash new old heads and released every Thursday at noon via bringingdowntheband.com. The show is brought to you by Coleman Dental, Printfinity, Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the show directly by becoming a member at patreon.com slash new old heads. You are now tuned in to the New Old Heads podcast. I am Major 7th. The crew is here. Starting off with my man, Jay Moore. How are you, sir? Hey, man, you know, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that logic and, and uh, affirmation, sir. I appreciate that. Appreciate you, bro. All right. My man, Longevity, how are you, sir? I am doing all right. Thanks for asking. Thanks. I got to click today, so I can't. All right, uh, never mind. You're right. We, we had some technical issues, but Lone is uh, versatile. So he'll, he'll, I'm not used right. to it. Yeah, it's been a while. My man, DJ J. Dev, what's happening, man? Hey, Tyson. Everything good, Joe Way? Yep, sometimes you got to take one for the team. <laughs> and sometimes you just have to say no. Yeah. Yeah, be careful portal hopping. Mm-hmm. We'll say that. Good to see you gentlemen coming off of, uh, you know, holiday three-day weekend. Was Ooh. it really? <laughs> well, for me it was. Oh, it's, it's weird because, like, when people say, oh, it's the weekend or we got three, I was like, I never feel that because oh, yeah, of the yeah. business I'm in. But yeah, um, I didn't see any dumb flyers. Oh, oh, I did. I saw some. Did y'all see yeah, some? Oh, yeah. You missed the whole wave then. Because, I must have missed yeah, the wave. Yeah, I, yeah. Or I wasn't looking for him. Yeah. Was, and a dumb statue the sta- that was uh, erected that's in what Boston, I, I believe. To, that was so hard. Like, I'm so glad you said that. I for a minute. I didn't know if it was like somebody's legs and somebody's head or... I eventually did see that it was like yeah, him they, and his they, daughter. But no, it was his, it was his wife. wife. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. My him thing, hugging Coretta. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My thing is, after I saw the the side-by-side... It didn't make it better for me. No, I didn't. It didn't make it better for me at all. I understood it, at least. You got where they were trying to go. Yeah, but yeah. it's I don't I don't feel like it was. A Bro, good when statue. you stand back and look at that thing, That's no, poor execution. That ain't it, man. Like I don't know what artistic mind thought that two arms embracing was just going to be the statue to honor Dr. Martin Luther King. It makes no sense. And there are some Martin Luther King statues that are actually cold. The, the one on the mall is cold. We like, got one here. We got that's cold. This one, Anderson, is cold. Like I've seen statues where he's been, you know, it's it's proper. Like it's a a nice look. It's respectable. Yeah. Um, and I'm and just as be us being creatives as well. It's like I don't want to be that person to get on the art, but I got to keep it a buck when I see it. And that that just I, I I just couldn't make sense of it, man. I was like, they need to, Freddie Gibbs was like, they need to pull that down, take that down right now. Mm. What you think, Jay Moore, when you saw that? I, I, you know, be honest now. I'll just be honest because I it, maybe it translates better if you're there to see it in person. But seeing pictures of it, I, I'm sorry, it just didn't do anything for me. Yeah, I, I would have if they'd have done a smaller statue and it was actually him and Coretta in an embrace. I think that would, you know, because that would have been fire. A, he spent a, you know, they both spent time in Boston, so there's a there's a connection there with yeah. Dr. King and, and and history with uh, with he and his wife and. In the city of Boston, but uh, gosh, man, I try to I try to give anything artistic the benefit of the doubt. Exactly, but is this just didn't translate for me in 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 the picture? I know it is supp- it's supposed to be a, but like it's hard not like <laughs> someone said it looks like the part of uh, Baby Boy where Ving Rhames is choking. Uh, <laughs> I saw that one choking that choking one. Tyrese, and I'm like, oh, why is that? Why is that now? What's going to come to mind when I see this? Um, it's already floating around on like a couple of different things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It, cause I, I'm, I'm sorry. Like this just didn't do it for me. Shout out to the artist for making an attempt to do something different, but no, yeah. at least he got a bag. Uh, you hope so. Yeah. Hopefully. This looks like a lot of material. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying for all, all the, I mean, as an artist, do you have to, if someone is, we'll call it, it'll just say is funding this or giving you the, like he said, a bag for it. Do you run this by someone that is funding it? prior to to make sure everybody gets or, clearance or, or just a friend Isn't that usually how a, a friend just you know, somebody that that somebody tell you the truth subjective yeah. yeah hey man what you think about this a family yeah uh, perhaps i don't, I don't think know. the family you think the family saw it they saw now <laughs> i'm talking about out there what was i gonna ask <laughs> dj paul getting flack for not going to uh uh, Boo's funeral. Did y'all see his response? Yeah, I did. Yeah. What would yep. you think about that? I had no problem with what he said. Me either. You know, all the way through. First of all, you know, he, I, I don't think anyone would lie, especially someone like who who would lie about paying for said funeral and making sure arrangements and things were taken care of. I mean, you can't ever tell someone how to grieve. I agree. 
there are some people who can do funerals and, and i know some people who, who say that's not that that's not the last way i want to see somebody yep i'd rather have whatever my last memory of them was of us personally hanging out or doing whatever i don't want the last memory of me is seeing them at a funeral so i get it i try to always pay my respects yeah you know sometimes you know but it, it can be it can wear on you if you've been to a lot of funerals agree especially in a short amount of time okay and some people you know it gets to the point where they they just they can't do it anymore uh so i i don't ever pretend to tell someone that they need to grieve one kind of way for that to make sense so you know anybody who's you know and plus the internet just gives everybody a soapbox to say what they would do and if if i was your if i would new gangsta but you didn't know gangsta boo yeah and you didn't know the relationship that she had with paul and that paul had with her so only they every know you know it's just like you don't just shut up <laughs> no, yeah. For real. yeah what just you think up. long go ahead long yeah, the same thing yeah i mean the, the way i kind of look at it is like you know the the person's passed on mm-hmm funeral is like a celebration or, that's for the or not here. It's for the people that are here so if you don't want to partake in that then you don't want to partake in that so that, that's kind of kind of how i feel about it yeah I, I saw some people say why bring up that you uh paid for it you well know? that's he brought it up because people were giving him flack for it yeah they're like you so, don't I care mean, i was like it's like i paid for it what do you mean yeah, i don't care what do you mean i don't care right yeah right, right. i mean you got any thoughts terry on that or was he was I mean, essentially the validation doesn't come from um other attendees at the funeral if they're not direct family and it seems like it's it was the ones who were just there expecting dj paul to be there that were saying something or seeing it on the internet or whatnot so i mean if that's not your place to uh decide who and whatever or where they're supposed to be just because a, a funeral service is going on people have things going on some people can't handle that type type of situation so i mean I understand. And, you know, people look, he said something that was very real. I think a lot it was lost on a lot of people. It's like when I go places, people see me and they're not even thinking about me as a person. Right. Like there are people in my face as groupies at funerals at, you know, or wherever I am. You yeah. know, like I remember um, Stevie Wonder, I believe, told the story. Someone who was in his circle at the time, you know, when <clears throat> Minnie Rifferton passed away and he had, he had done some work with her. So, you know, they had a relationship and like, I think somebody was, he, I think he was a pallbearer or something in the funeral. And he said, oh, wow, no, man, while he was there, someone slipped him a tape. You know, it was like, how rude is that? You man? know, but that's how people, like he said that when you're famous, people don't see you as a person a lot of times. And so opportunity, you know, they're like, well, I'll never see him again like this. Let me go ahead and get my demo and let me see if Paul needs some beats. And it was like. He said people would have been just, he, the last one he went to, people just kept coming up to him just to talk to him. Yeah, so you got to understand, like, a lot of times we forget that famous people are actually people. And, like, we treat them like every time this is supposed to be an industry connect or something. It's like, this is somebody's funeral. Could you please no, don't take any pictures and leave me alone? And if your experience has been, like, every time you go to a funeral, people are looking to, to link or to, or to, or to, yeah. or to see as, as an opportunity for themselves, I wouldn't go to funerals either. That ain't it. Yeah, that's definitely not it. What, what you say hold on for, man? Man, I'm going to just leave it at that, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to read a comment from Benny. See what y'all think. There's most people who say rap is violent or don't like rappers talking about drugs will not listen to that same rapper if he or she makes, makes what they deem to be positive music. So shut the F up and leave it to the people who like it. Did y'all catch that? Mm-hmm. What's he in reference to, though? Just like when people talk about... Oh, all y'all do is rap about drugs. All you do is rap about this. All you do is rap about that. And he's basically saying, well, if we didn't rap about that and tried to rap about something else, y'all wouldn't like it. Is it ain't for everybody, though. That's true. Is he t- I was just going to say, is he talking about this from a perspective of like people who aren't in hip hop that, that say this type of stuff, fans? I, or is he talking, you know, like I'm thinking, the I'm Fox looking- News? Or is he <laughs> saying this like from an angle of like... You know, just I'm looking at it other hip hop fans. I'm looking at it as the fans or the consumers. Like when people, because people always we hear that a lot. All y'all do, all they do is talk about this. All they do is talk about that. That can be applied to, you know, multiple rappers if that's the case. So I think he's just defending his right to be able to rap about whatever he wants to rap about. And and even the headline says Benny the Butcher defends violent rap. He says positive music. 
turns, turns fans, fans off. off. Is this an older thing? I feel like this happened a while ago. Yeah, it was in December. Was it? I think it was okay. January or late December. No, I was in late December. Okay, I just remember this uh, popping up. What do you think, Jay Moore? Look, <clears throat> the we can talk about whatever market forces there are, and you know the agenda setting there is that happens within media. But I see what works in real time, and. You know, everybody was like, well, I wish it was better. I wish it was this, that, and the third. Yeah, I bet you do. But you know what? Um, the majority of the records at work, either talking about sex or talking about violence or talking about second violence. And that's not, and the thing is, we can't just, you know, uh, say it's just hip hop because what are the movies at work? Violent movies or movies about sex or sex and violence movies that have sex and violence. I mean, even with, you know, the, you know, what's considered family fair, which is, you know, Marvel and whatnot, there's still violent movies, very violent movies. Everything is violent. You know, and so Disney movies are violent. When, you know, when he says that, I was like, yeah, he's, he's right. Because people like to hear outlaw culture and that that fair has always been what drives pop culture. I mean, as much as, you know, I mean, they don't it, it's not the same thing because I don't feel like people are trying to live it. But, you know. We always talk about our, you know, when we talk about Martin Scorsese movies, they always talk about Goodfellas, Casino. Yeah, uh, you know, like he's done other movies. He's he hasn't just done gangster movies, but those are the ones we talk about. So he's right. I mean, I wish there was a lane for more positive party. I mean, there is a even the party inspired hip hop is still talking about you know popping this and and we doing this and oh I'll catch you sliding on the ops and these are supposed to be the fun songs. I, you know, I, I think I mean, I wish what, there was more of a space where people were just having fun and enjoying themselves, but it always goes into sex and violence. But what, what works? Go, go ahead, Alon. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say. I mean, I feel like that is what people enjoy. People, people, especially us. Literally just talked about it on my special panel that I was on last week. <laughs> shout out to shout, shout out, out to, to my it. plug on Fox, <laughs> where we talked about the violence of football. But no, yes. like. Uh, literally like that was one of the talking points is how us in the united states of america we like violence right in general you know and so it's built on violence well that that's true as well i guess what i'm thinking is what what's going to work versus saying people won't listen to the alternative you, you see what i'm saying it's like he kind of threw it out there like what do you mean what's going to work i mean when i say what's going to work we're talking to, they're talking about what will be pushed to the masses masses and will be successful we're talking about the violence and all that other stuff well, but there's a piece in here where he also says y'all wouldn't listen to it anyway would you watch uh the nfl if it turned into flag football well that's no. what the pro no the pro I, if, I'm, if be. i'm being honest no that's i'm just curious you yeah. know what yeah. i mean if i'm being honest no you know what mm. i mean so it's like i would watch hockey without the fights yeah but Say, but, but, but say you couldn't slam into, say players couldn't slam into each other. Yeah, I mean, but it doesn't inherently like change the game. I mean, it kind of does actually. I guess it kind of does. But the hockey, yeah. But yeah, I'm just I, you I know, see, yeah, I see what you're you know, saying. It's like, yeah, it's, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's like would you you know, and are there are people who don't like football as much just because a a large part of the violence has been taken out. You can't hit the as uh, hard. The, the, yeah. You can't hit the quarterback. Used to be, you know, the quarterback was one of the most dangerous things to be out there. You just throw him down on the ground, and it was like, that's how you play football. Like, remember the old yeah. NFL blitz game to yeah. where after wow. the play was you over, went, you went back. you'd be able slam to, him, spin him around, you'd slam be able him to jump on him and they were already, You know, <laughs> we used to love that too, by the yeah, way. They took it out. Yeah. Like, because they, they sell the console now. But you can't do all that extra stuff that you used to be yeah, able to do. Yeah, they took, yeah. So you get if, mutant league football, and you can, like, blow people up. I well, forgot about that. You know, because no NFL. Like yeah. now, I remember there was this uh, back in the day. You know, when when Madden was kind of struggling, there was this game called NFL Game Day on on the original mm-hmm. PlayStation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for whatever reason, there was you know there were all these secret codes you could put in. And for whatever reason, the people who at at Sony or Nine Eight Nine Studios, I remember the name of the studio. One of the secret codes was steroids, and it would give you a good, really good stiff arm. Uh, oh, word! Upgrade. And the NFL found out about that is like if that's in there in in c- the continued pressings, you got to take that out, or you risk not having an NFL license or an NFL PA license ever again. Yeah, I remember that. You know the NFL. Like, remember there used to be the game NFL Street. Oh yeah. yeah. Like they were like, hmm, we don't want to confuse. We don't want to have the NFL and the Street kind of on the same package anymore. So that's why you don't see that game. I remember they tried to like call it NFL Tour the next year and it sucked. But nah. um, yeah, nah. 
I mean, no more NFL Street. No more, you know, throwing people. No more. Remember the ambulance that used to come on mm, the, uh, yeah, the field in uh, in Madden. Yep, and it would knock the players over. <laughs> you know, even though it was real cartoony at the time, the NFL was like, "Yeah, don't don't do that anymore." Charleston White actually said on an interview that he did with uh, King Von's DJ, "The reason I acted a fool on your show is because I knew you needed content, and I knew that our interview was so positive, nobody was gonna watch it." He just said that the other day. I mean, he hangs up on people if they they join his video and they're on right. some positive. Right. He ends it. He's like, I ain't on no positive stuff. Mm. I'm trying. Like, he's trying to get views. So I mean, that's that's Charleston White's character. It, it goes to what it kind of goes to that because it does. It does. It goes. Yeah. It goes. It goes to exactly what he's talking about here because he openly said, "I had to act a fool and do something because I knew the interview was too positive." And he that's actually the era does. That what's crazy is people don't know. Charleston White causes all this commotion online, but outside of his online persona, he actually does positive things in the community for kids in the community. Yep. But you would never know that by seeing him online because he's this character that wants to get views, wants to go viral, this, that, and the third. Right. And it is reflective of I wouldn't say music is just or hip hop music is just about gaining views and going viral because this is what it was before that even existed. That's true. You know That's what I'm true. saying? So it, it's more so of um, there's different styles. Everybody doesn't rap about the same thing. Unfortunately, we're in a point in time right now where that's what's pushed forward. But if you really wanted to find something like that, I guess you could. But yeah. I, you know, but like like I said, we not if don't don't tell people like yo maybe you need to change up rap music. I was like, well, okay, let's talk. Let's let's. But who's tell, saying that though? I you know I don't know the same people who always want to say change what's working because ain't uh, nobody telling people to stop talking about getting drunk and cheating on your wife and stuff in country music oh but I, even even with the, <laughs> take it out of take it out of that realm you know okay nobody's saying okay let, how about we just do a year where we don't put out a, a call of duty uh video game no i'm going to uh how about be upset about that <laughs> yeah and, and, and uh, how about it's just a year where hey you know, we just we don't have a, we put out Marvel movies that are just fully character driven and have no action, no R rated films for a whole year. Yeah, you know, even like I said, even PG thirteen joints, like they just don't show all the blood, but the violence is still there. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, so if you said that to in in any of, they'd be like, would you get out of here and leave us you alone? You can't really hope. That's I don't know. It's just weird, and it, this kind of goes back to what we were saying about this has pretty much been embedded in American culture forever. Yeah, even back in. Uh, early 90s when Mortal Kombat came out. Right. Man. We couldn't wait to get the Mortal Kombat game to get it home and put in codes to make blood show up. Because remember at first -A -B -B. There blood it didn't show up. You would just fight each other and the blood wouldn't show up like the arcade. Yeah. But we wanted to see the blood. So I mean that's just kind of embedded in and that's only the our 90s. culture yeah. as a whole, but, essentially. But, but it's also about market forces because, like, Nintendo thought, "Hey, we'll do the right thing, and we'll take all the blood and the really gory fatalities out of, and we'll seem like we're uh, the the responsible video game company compared to Sega." Mm -hmm. And um, when they saw the sales numbers come back and saw that uh, Sega sold three times as many. When it was time for Mortal Kombat 2 to come oh, out, yeah. I bet that they had all the blood and all the fatalities Absolutely. in the game. Yeah. What were you going to say, Long? Just just kind of echo the idea of, you know, just, I mean, we're, we're a nation and a country that's built on violence. Right. You know, it, since our inception. And, you know, we have a fascination with, with firearms in this country as well, you know. And, you know, it's just, uh, this whole conversation in general is very much, um, I, I feel like it's inauthentic when 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 somebody tries to target a specific genre or a specific movie or a specific anything because it's just the culture it's just what it is in general so that's why i asked you the question early on like where is this coming from is this mm. coming from people that listen to hip hop and like oh we like positive hip hop or whatever you know or is it coming from like somebody who's not even a part of it who's just like you know throwing out you know which just happens trying to a lot. bring it down yeah for yeah, sure which happens yeah. a lot yeah, yeah right. it happens a lot no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Y'all actually made some great examples um, of stuff from the past and current. Like, you know, it's just, it's the culture. Like, was Terrence and you both said, it just is what it is. It's actually the culture. So, so you said Flex is corny. He's mad corny. I mean, but my boy said, basically, I don't care what y'all say, man. Y'all out here uh, 
saying Gunner is cool, so I'm gonna start running the records. Yeah. Okay. Did, did so is it is cool? it based on is it based on you actually want to play six That's nine records? That's the question. Or is it based on just because Gunner is doing whatever he's doing and people are up in arms about it? Is is that the reason? I believe because it it boils down to six nine doesn't have anything playable. Right. He's he's an internet troll mm-hmm. and he's a radio troll. So I guess it's a perfect perfect marriage at the end of the day. But I just I don't know, man. It, it kind of kind of the word. It kind of puts Flex in in the same position that people have been talking about him about for years now. I mean, he had a beef with Pac after Pac was gone. And Simba roasted him on that freestyle Come by on, the way man. too. Yeah, he did. In his face. Yeah. Talk to him as a man in his face. Talk to him as a man. <laughs> Do we got? Oh, never mind. Yeah. Oh, we had to take. Yeah, it's a wrap for that today. Yeah, it's a wrap for that. Jay Moore, man, it's the snitching talk. Gunner out here, Gunner lost all his. Now, I don't know if this is real. Now, I just saw a screenshot. I think he lost the majority of his followers. Name is being mentioned in records. They said little Dirk might have dissed him. What you think about Flex? Is Flex just, is this just clout chasing, we man? We need to loan. Um, yeah, you, uh, you already know. Interjection. <laughs> what, that I don't care? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to sound though. I like when you. Yeah. Well, no, I, I mean you gotta care. understand. I don't care. I don't uh, care. Flex is, uh, and I can say this is somebody old. Is an old man still trying to insert himself into young, relevant, quote unquote, pop rap business? He doesn't really care about any of this stuff. Um, Thanks, it, man. At least uh, he shouldn't. I mean, like it's it's still it's still weird to me. And like his his status is solidified. He's a oh he's a legend. But, now. but at the same time, it's just weird. Like for him to be this old, still up here trying to do this, uh, on pulling straws for attention. You know, I think it's at, at this. Terry hit the nail, nail on the head about the records. Like, what are the records that you gonna run? You know, it'd be one thing if if maybe Six Nine had something that was so undeniable that you had to play it, and now you've just been looking for an excuse. But that's not how Six Nine's music works. I mean, it just isn't isn't good, good enough. It's not John Blaze. For you to be like, <laughs> it's not John okay. Blaze. I mean, it's it's just like we're trying to make excuses to play bad music that you're not interested in anyway. I like and that. I don't I don't know what gonna I don't know what his his career prospects are going forward, especially if people start really going to jail and the paperwork starts to lead back to him. But I don't I don't know. I'm not that versed in the case and the the <clears throat> exact reasons why Gunners got to go home and everybody else is still sitting in jail but um you know it's just for him to even bring for it for for Funkmaster Flex to even bring up uh 69 it's like dude you don't care like that corny and you know he won New York to be on top so bad you're already on the radio every night in New York all right you don't have to do this there are some people they got to say stuff like this because they're trying to you know get whatever it is off the ground so they can be heard in you know market number 67 you are in market number one yeah. and have a platform and this is what you choose <clears throat> to do with it it's just corny and plus like i said you're not really playing nobody's really playing you know after pushing p ran its course it's not like we're checking for gunner like that anyway people were talking about how his album was just okay before all this stuff happened so yeah, it, it, there's, the records aren't even there for us to be like, oh, what's Gunner going to do next? Well, unless he comes out with some straight, because if he comes out with some straight heat, all will be forgiven. Will it? <clears throat> it do- well, you know what? I take that back. Once again, it's, it, it depends on how many people wind up going to jail and what the pay- and if and if it looks like his paperwork kind of came around to get some of those people convictions. Because I know he, it's been said that like nothing he said and he admitted to is going to put anybody else in jail. But you we'll know, see how it plays. We'll out. see how it plays out. We'll see how it plays out. But once again, Funkmaster Flex doesn't care anything about Six Nine's music. This is just something for about him chasing. to seem relevant. And it's like, dude, you are the legacy hip hop station in the number one market in America. You don't have to do this. Terry, you said he. You, Terry, you mentioned that he wants to have. You said New York hip hop at the top so bad. <laughs> You think that yeah, he's about to put a, a battery in six nines back and carry a flag for him? That's ugly. That is ugly. There's a lot more artists in New York. Like, why don't he get behind Sky Zoo? Sky Zoo just dropped the album. That's too much. Like, right though. Yeah, That's play play his records on on a uh, on the radio. Why you, why are you so pressed to play six nine rate records? It makes no sense. It goes back to what we just talked about. You know what moves the needle? I don't know. I think it's. I'm sitting here looking at the quote here. I, I just think it's a weird double standard that doesn't make any sense. Like, you talking about Flex. Flex's quote? Flex, yeah. So, like, 
he said, spoke to Jim Jones. He expressed that for him, there will be never be any tolerance for testifying and cooperating. In today's era, Jones and I may disagree on the why or why not the music should play of people who cooperate, but we both agree that times might have changed and integrity is fully lost. So I'm no longer not not playing his music. So the interesting thing about that statement is like, just because the culture is that way doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice your own integrity. And so for him saying that means that he's just like, well, I'm going to just jump in line with everybody else because if nobody else has integrity, I don't have to have it either. So why do it? It's just like, you're corny, man. Just integrity isn't something that is like, you have integrity, you have integrity, I have integrity, Jay has integrity, everybody watching has integrity. It's not something that is like this big culmination of thing. Like you get to decide what, what, where your parameters are. So I don't know. It just seems super corny to me. I mean, nobody made you, made him come out one and just national, just say this so everybody can see it. So that's cloud attached right there. And to your point about the integrity, you don't have to, <laughs> this, this you is don't how, have to do if this. If this is how you feel, then this is how you feel. But if it's not, then why, why are you caping for some, in, invisible rule out there like you have the control to do what you if you wanted to play six nines music before is, is should have played is, it is, is that suggesting that you always wanted to play it you know that's like, a good or question just, or that's now you just like question. well the goalpost seems to have moved so i guess i'll move with it yeah like I, that's the biggest that's that's the problem we have in society right now everybody sure. just wants to go ahead and you know anytime they move the goalpost it's like all right we'll just go ahead and move with the goalpost i like that one long where you said perhaps he uh he may have been itching to play them joints and didn't feel comfortable about it. Now this is a fake out. I don't even know if that's necessarily. I just, I just, I just don't think he has. I don't want to. It doesn't. I don't know flex like that, but it just doesn't seem like he has integrity. It doesn't sound genuine at all, though. Good, huh? They're not that his songs aren't that good. Well, that too. To be foaming at the mouth to play them on the radio. I just think that. I just think that this is a. Uh, does he really care? Like, does, no, do, you know, I don't like, think so. does he really care? Because no. it does. I don't feel like he does. So it's just a weird place to position yourself. He's it strikes me it as a clicks. wave, He's like riding a wave. Yeah, it, it strikes me as a wave. Seems like it's corny. You know, I mean, well, it's, the thing is, I think it's corny when people cloud chase and they have no reason to do so. And that's what I've, that's, that, yeah. I. I think that's my whole thing with flex. It's like here you are. In control. In complete control. Complete control. Of, of you know, you probably have more autonomy than almost any DJ who worked for a corporate entity, you know, because like if if you didn't already know, basically if you work for most stations and you're a mix show DJ or you, you call yourself a mix show DJ, they're going to give you a list of songs to play. And if you deviate anywhere outside of this playlist, you could potentially be fired. I don't, I think because Flex has been there so long, if he really likes a record, right. he can just go ahead and play it. Like that's the that's the kind of autonomy he has. He is the he he's 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 known for playing songs eight times in a row. There is no way, I you know, of all the DJs that I know, you know, between St. Louis, uh, Indianapolis, Chicago, if they did anything like that, they would be immediately fired. You yeah. know, so Flex can do what he wants as far as programming is concerned. Why he would even bring this up, I, like I said, do you're at the top. You don't have to do what everybody else does. And True. so that's why it's just kind of baffling to me that he would just kind of insert himself into this is Atlanta business with Gunna and all this. He doesn't need to insert himself into any of this. Yeah. In true Agreed. flex in true flex fashion, he inserted himself. Drop a bomb on that. <laughs> I didn't hear what I couldn't hear what, what that one was. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all right, man. Well, look, can we shout out our partners real quick? Sure. Let's do that. Thanks to our partners. Dr. Coleman of Coleman Dental is our go-to dentist. He's a longtime Indianapolis arts and music supporter located right in Broad Ripple. Printfinity is a screen printing shop based in Indianapolis, owned and operated by our own DJ J. Diff. Our good friends at Indie CD and Vinyl operate one of the best record stores in North America. Shop new and used in their site or visit them in person. And the best way to support the new old heads is to visit our Patreon and become a member for as little as three bucks a month. All details on newoldheads.com. <laughs> All right, we are back. Shout out to our partners as always. We appreciate the support and continue supporting partnership. Shout out to the chat. The chat is lit. Nicole is back and got this thing popping in the chat. We appreciate you. Welcome back. All right. Let's uh long you said let's go let's let's do uh Shad Moss is out here <clears throat> preaching to the community. Okay. The rap community, Jay Moore. On the from the pulpit. Or right. maybe he might have been outside in the in the vestibule, I don't know. If you've been to church, you know what a vestibule is. That's why I'm probably usher in the church. <laughs> Keep going, gotta, I'm sorry. 
Why? <laughs> why you gotta be a usher? We're in the choir. He's in the choir. Director. Know, you know, ushers gotta make sure people get get to their seats properly and yeah. um, make sure people don't come in. Well, <laughs> it's a worthy job to have. Yeah, it's, it's, it's respectable. You know, yeah. especially with what we're about to talk about. Right. Right. Yeah. You know. Thanks, Just Long. Yeah. Well, that's a good positive spin on that, my brother. Appreciate you. Yeah, I'm trying to be the change that Benny is it. <laughs> <laughs> Bar of the night. Bar of the night. So Bow Wow says hip hop needs a board, no different than the NBA, with the Players Association, a committee that can set rules, set rules and keep things in control and protect this thing we call hip hop. And have a retirement plan for the OG rappers. I hate seeing my heroes liquored out, no money. Just watch. I'm going to stop you right there. Thank you. Go ahead. So the difference between hip hop and NBA Mm -hmm. is there's no company called hip hop that is writing everybody that has a record deal a check. The NBA is a a whole company, a billion dollar company that signs checks to all its players. So it's easy to create a union behind that because it's all coming from the same place. Same with, with every other job that has a union. So it's a good idea in theory, but how do you make that happen from people that are either a solo or don't have any kind of contract with anybody? The ones that are on the record labels, the ones that are managed by people that might be in a, under a whole nother umbrella. That in itself sounds like a mess that will never cultivate into something that everybody would agree upon but go ahead i'm sorry well what you think long i I would say that i would agree with what you're saying if in the in the way that everything is set up now because Mm -hmm. everything is set up now very top down from different (laughs) companies and they're working directly with talent but the change could come potentially if there is some sort of hip-hop entity like a players union of sorts right to where the players go through them first and then they go out to wherever they go to now, will that ever happen, or, or or is it super complicated? Yeah, of course, because right now, the, the way everything is set up, it doesn't make any sense because it's labels picking artists out and doing whatever they do. But let's say there was an, a hip-hop entity, mm-hmm. and Jay-Z was on it, and you know all of uh, Cash Money was on it, and, and Drake was on it, and all this other stuff, and every artist that was potentially going to sign a deal, uh, this particular union, as we would call it, I guess... Uh, dealt directly with the record label companies, then maybe if the artists, before they went and did that, maybe they went to hip hop, right? And then they were somehow under that umbrella. I don't know. I feel like it's not, it's not like completely like, oh, this could never happen. I just don't feel like we are structured in a way and uh, we are conditioned in a way to even think that something like that could ever happen here. Because like, is there even outside of hip hop, is there a a union with just artists in general on these record labels? No. It's not even just saying hip hop. Like to, to my knowledge, even, to my knowledge like, no. It's not even like with um say actors. There's a screen actors guild. Right. Yep. Okay. That's and pretty much just having a, a card essentially. You know, but Same you have card. to but you basically have to pay into that union. I, I, I remember hearing a story um about of all people uh Dick Gregory. He wound up uh being in some Rob Schneider movie. That Rob Schneider had seen him on something and said, hey, I'd love to have Dick Gregory in the movie. We could give him a small role. Right. And because of that, you know, Dick Gregory had health insurance for the first time mm. in years, you know, because he was active in the union. Even though he didn't get paid a lot for the uh, particular role, he was able to get insurance. Mm. You know, maybe if there's something like that, like if you start making records and say you you finally register your music with ASCAP or BMI or whatever, uh, there's also a step to where a certain, say even it's just a half of a percent of your generated income goes to paying your way into the Hip Hop Association dues retirement fund. You know, I completely made up that organization just (laughs) on the fly. Um, And then, you know, that money goes into, uh, you know, insurance paying into some sort of end of life benefit just so we don't have to have GoFundMes pay for rappers funerals yeah you know maybe there could be something like that but everyone would have to opt in exactly. and there are people who are going to be like no i'm taking care of my own business i'm doing yeah. or i need a new chain I'm yeah not, i'm not paying you know and there we go or you know unless there would have to be other benefits outside yeah. of just like paying for stuff right mm-hmm. it would have to because be like- the thing with the screen actors guild which is solid is like for example during COVID, nobody was acting so they were able to 
still live because of the Screen Actors Guild, essentially, if they need to go to the doctor or not and get a small stipend or whatever. Good point. But with music, they can continue to make music through whatever, essentially, right? Yeah. But also think about, like, the, the music industry is is crazy, and it's like, um, I mean, it's cutthroat. And so, right. like, uh, you know, there would have to be a very, very major change in culture for anything like this to even to even be you know, breathe the pond because it's like, it's not just the labels, but it's also like the artists, the dist- well, it's also the distribution platforms, the publishing platforms. Mm. It's like, there's so many moving parts and it's already super complicated anyway. The streaming platform. That's what I mean. Yeah. So uh, it's, that's super, super complicated, but it doesn't mean that it can't be tackled. It would just, uh, if everybody did get on board, if, if it became as standard as 10 years ago, not everybody was putting their music on iTunes and Apple right away. I mean, most mm. people were, right? But now everybody is into streaming because ev- that's the way it is. But if every artist knew, just like you have to go through a distro kit or you have to go through whatever that, okay, another one of my steps after that isn't just sound exchange and song trust and ASCAP, but I need to register on here and become a part of this, then maybe maybe it beca- becomes something like a, a players association or something like that to where you can bargain with like, hey, uh, we don't like getting a point zero 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 seven cents every stream. We want point zero 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 five. You know, like maybe that conversation can be had at the best of everybody a part of a specific I, thing. I I don't think it's like <clears throat> super super crazy out there, but it would take a lot. It's to me. I I think what scares even the hip hop veterans or the OGs because people like Chuck D have talked about this. You know, LL Cool J talks about this all the time. You know, j- Jay Z talks about it. Jay Z talks about it. But Lone, you said something earlier. You were talking about an idea always sounds good, right. right? I think what you just described in terms of how difficult this is, the possibility of this could be. I think that's one of the main things that scares people or scares Hove and Chuck when they all get together is the fact that how much is going to take and how many moving parts are going to be involved to get this to happen. And who's going to be over it? Who And who's going to be over it? Because someone be like, I don't want Jay-Z uh, yeah. watching the money. I don't want Chuck D watching the money. I don't want so-and-so watching the money. And there's always going to be a level of infighting that you know comes from. I mean, but that happens with any union. Any yeah, union, you know, business, right? business structure, all that. So those conversations that don't want to opt into that union yeah. because imagine uh, Drake is making all this money and then you got this other artist that's not making nowhere near the amount as Drake is, and he doesn't yeah. want to pay in to the union for sure like that because that, he's not making the same amount of money. That's and that's, essentially the union is going to help him more mm-hmm. than it's going to help Drake. But Which, at the end of the day, I mean that's how that's how it works. I mean, like the union helped out those small act, you know, the, with those smaller actors. You know, the you know Denzel has been getting twenty million dollars a movie for the last twenty years. He, you know, that hit the COVID didn't hit him the same way it hit like a day player or somebody no. who's you know just shows up and you know is a character actor and that we you know we see him all the time, but we may not even know their name. Terry made a good point as it relates to Drake because you know. Do you love the? Uh, is this something that you love so much that you want to sew into to help other people out? Are there a lot of top tier artists that really want to take that and sew into it so it can be dispersed to the people that need it, or are they just like man? Well, it's not just like I think the 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 framing the idea isn't just like it's not just like signing up so you can create a pot of money. It's creating right. it's creating equity. It's creating it's adjusting the power structure of what right. everything is right. So you I have to you. buy into the idea of one that you're going to be you know this is this is one of what's the what's the saying you know change happens when uh old men who make plant trees that they'll never see or something like that right mm-hmm. it's, it's going to have to be a long-term type of thing for mm-hmm. for the change that you want to see for the genre that you're a part of or the culture that you're a part of in the long term so it, it's gonna ha- it's gonna take something like that and maybe drake doesn't join that's okay but maybe these other 500 people do you know there's always going to pe- be people that aren't a part of you know what it is but you know, I think having the option to or to create that in in particular manner, I think would be, I don't know, I think it's something that's uh, kind of cool in general. If you can, you know, if you have the people that are yeah. willing to take it on, you know, that what I mean? part, so ideally it is solid, that. but it's just a lot of moving parts. But, like that's, but that's but it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same thing. Um you know, I mentioned this again on the show that I was on, but it's like our, our <laughs> soul. So, we see you. But but our corporations in this in the country they they reflect 
what our society is. And if our society is extremely capitalist in nature, with it, which it is, then all of the business entities are going to reflect that as well. And all the issues that reflect that we have in, in society, which are, you know, if we look at societal problems or let's say racism within organizations or yep. other that, stuff, that too, yeah. other stuff, right? <laughs> um, anything that happens within our society also happens within organizations. So it's like, it's reflective of that. And us being a very hyper capitalist society, um, that you know, kind of, kind of fringes at the idea of a socialist idea of a union. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's hard to overcome just in other businesses that aren't as like, like hip hop's like so interesting because it's, it's not like one business entity that owns it. It's not like a Starbucks. You nope. know what I mean? Nope. So the fact that like there's still legislation, there's still pushback against like labor unions now, and there's prop like agit prop against it, and all this other stuff like. In regular stuff, you know, like it's going to be that much harder f- going up against the probably one of the biggest corporations in the world, which is the corporation of the music the industry. The music entertainment industry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you I mean, and yeah. the thing is, you're always going to, there's, there's always going to be bumps and bruises along the way. Uh, if something, I don't know if you guys remember in like Tecmo Super Bowl, where like if you play it as the Bills, you didn't play as Jim Kelly, you played as QB Bills. Yeah. You didn't play as Randall yeah, Cunningham. That. You played as QB, QB Eagles. Eagles. It was because at one point, you know, the, you know, there were certain players who separated themselves from the NFLPA. And they were like, we want to do our own um, licensing deals. That's where you wind up getting the, you know, NFL quarterback club. You know, because those yeah. particular quarterbacks, they was like, we don't want to be in the, we don't want to lump, <clears throat> we don't want to be lumped in with every other player. We we feel like we have enough power to cut our own deals. Right. You know, now basically with the licensing, like you don't see that anymore. Like everybody gets Charles Barkley, money. Reggie yeah. Miller. You yeah. Know, just Jordan like was like that. Yeah, early. Just just like, you know, yeah. uh, in, in, in the initial NBA live games, you didn't have Jordan. You didn't player have 23. You didn't have you didn't have Barkley. Eventually, Shaq signed a deal, and he was, you know, he he wound up being back in the game. So there was a short time. There was no, just like when you play the old NBA jam, NBA Jam, big as that game was, Michael Jordan wasn't in it because he had his own deal. They would have had to pay him his own fee to be in the game. For the record, uh, yeah. so like he didn't want the union deal, and so there's going to be rappers yeah, like that for sure. But well, they better get like T Grizzly and and drive a Uber and be a, a waiter and a registered nurse on the side. Because uh, it's real out here, evidently. But also, there was a part that Bow Wow <laughs> said about a board, uh, like of, I, I don't know if was, if you had to get your certificate of appropriateness <laughs> from <laughs> from a certain board of rap. I mean, it's like because I know there are a lot of rappers that be like, I'll be damned if I got to run my lyrics and behavior by Bow Wow before Come I start on, doing. No, first of all, sure, Bow Wow is sure. not going to be a board member. Um, uh, I mean, what, it's his idea. It's his idea. What if he says, "I would like to be on the board." Well, and since I submitted this, and he gets uh, enough votes to where look, he might be able to, he it. might be able to George Santos this thing. You got to respect it. Do I have to respect? <laughs> you got to respect it if, if he's is, is that his name, name whatever his name is. Yeah. Well, you say Clarence. What was his name? George Santos. Well, he's he changed his name multiple times. Yeah, oh, is the okay. thing. Yeah, yeah, he also went to school on a volleyball scholarship. Oh, um, hey man, here's the board. We get we get Chuck D. We okay, get, we get Bun B. We get uh, David Banner. We okay. get Killer Mike on there. Okay, if I like know, it. Jay Z would just be a plus because he's a capitalist. I so like you, it. So you got that in there a little bit. You Do know, we want Puff? I feel like you can need Puff or Jay. You could have both, maybe. I'm gonna take Jay. Maybe. Okay, but, but say what? What did they say? It was like, hmm. Okay, say remember it was a few years ago, and they like Lil Wayne had he had, he had a song with Future, and he said he had he had a real distasteful bar about Emmett Till. I remember as that. a punchline, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And like, do, would would our hip hop board have pulled him to the side and said, you know, we're not going to do that? Or like, uh, the time, would Wayne listen if they pulled or, him to the or, side? Or the time when like Nicki Minaj on on some song. She decided she would put Malcolm X on the cover of like not a song that had nothing to do with Malcolm X or even well then, the spirit of what he would like. Do we do we I feel make like those kind of calls? I've, no, I, I feel like that's going too far left. I think this is just monetarily. This is, this is just bargaining power. This is literally just bargaining power with the the higher entities. I think that's all it is because I don't think you can police that. I don't think you nah. can police what goes into it because that would go back to what Benny was talking about essentially because he would be essentially 
have a strike or go on strike. Yeah. Where Essentially like, in the union with, based on his lyrics. Where, yeah, like, go. where it's like, hmm, okay, there are 42 crack references. <laughs> yeah, I don't think <laughs> you can. We talking about Pusha T? No, I mean, we just want to say anybody. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, let's see, the board is determined. You can only have 34. Five yeah. crack references nah. on your album. I don't think it's that, that right. That right there would turn people away. Yeah, yeah I don't that think wouldn't be. It. I don't it's think too it's, much policing. I don't think it's that. I think it's just bargaining power. I think it's just bargaining power and uh, leveraging. Was, the artists yeah, don't have any leverage. The artists don't have any artists. The artists Arvis. don't have any leverage. Yeah. So to Lone's point, it would be more about that. And the another thing, maybe it's, maybe it's not even a hip hop thing. Maybe it's just a music industry thing too. Because he said, yeah. "I hate seeing my my heroes liquored up or." I, uh, out no money or just washed. So without I mean, money, that happens just with every every profession. I mean, essentially, I mean, you got unfortunately uh, the armed forces. A lot of them have PTSD when they come back from over there. That's true. And the government does not take care of them at all. They're on the side of the road with a sign. I mean, ask for money. I mean, and your favorite basketball player might have spent all his money on child support and exactly. and and, and uh, bad restaurant ideas. <laughs> I mean, like he ain't lying though. Like that's what it's what happens. Like I, it's it's like somebody like people like you know you it's easy to get rich, but it's easy to also get back to being poor after yeah. you're rich. I I think the the overarching conversation that we're actually having here um, is just how I'm gonna go there again. Let's but, go. Let's go. But it's like would Bow Wow would would a lot of these uh, artists that have these issues later on in life, let's say with healthcare and and. and we don't even have like socialized medicine in this country, right? right. So I feel like a lot of these arguments we're trying to, you know, what Bow Wow, Bow wow is suggesting here is literally a form of socialism or a part of it. And we know how they feel about that. For sure, right? And so that's why it would automatically catch, it would be extremely hard to even form. But I mean, like if we had a social what's the word I'm looking for? Like social uh, resources, resources and like things and places to where not even for hip hop artists, just for, people just, just for America. people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just for people yeah. in general. If we had socialized medicine to the point to where like, if you're sick, you can go to the doctor and then not be in poverty afterwards. That would help all of this. Right. If we had, um, different types of things in place along those lines, then this conversation switches a little bit. So to me, it always goes back to, we're a capitalist, super capitalist driven, driven society, and it's going to be hard to change anything if we are still stuck in that realm. So the next big rap group is going to be called Under the Union, the Social Capitalists. Nice, <laughs> nice social capitalists. Yeah, we call those democratic socialists. Oh. Or actually, or no, well, there's a word for that, Norway. Oh my Norway. god, man! I'm serious. Though. Norwegian, like, yes, you. Uh, I forget what it's like. A, I, I'm ha- drawing a blank right now, but there, there's a word for it. Social Democrats is what they call mm. them. Uh, Anyways, an in, uh, interview I saw with LL one time on Rock the Bells was health benefits, like kind of like what you were just talking about. And I, I think a lot of this, the majority of it, well, not the majority, but a big portion, could be just as simple as. OGs being able to take care of themselves and go to the doctor, like but, just. But imagine if we had socialized. I get that part. Yeah, I get that part. I get that part. Right now to America. I get that part. At the end of the day, yeah, yeah, I get that part. Our country, you know, but like so. It's just the fact that LL actually mentioned the that part, how, the importance of that for right. somebody like. And he's rich. And he, exactly, he's rich, but he's like he's thinking of the OGs and the elders that preceded him that might have certain issues. I ain't saying all of them are broke, but he just was like, "Yo, I know people that were out that influenced me that were older than me that can't do certain things now because there's nothing in place for them to get aid to do it." Right. And, he's and he's not going to be in the union. Yeah, Social Security, academics, yeah, yeah. academics is not going to be in that. No, union. no, we can't. Remember, he talked anymore. bad about the uh, the OGs that didn't have money. Well, apparently he's only talking about one person, but he won't. Mm. But he won't pull a put a put a name on it. Bro, bullet. I saw him got extreme. He got dragged by Hassan Piker Damn. again in a debate. No, it was the same. This is, is what I'm talking oh, about. The one, like, he oh. got dragged on him. Like it, it was bad. Yeah, some people. You just, know, like you know, like it would be great if if there's a 55 year old rapper that should just be able to go to the doctor. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Just like, like a 55 year old retired school teacher should should be, should be able, able to go, to, go, to, the go to the doctor or somebody yeah. that works at Wendy's. You know what I mean? You know, um, but you know, in this, unfortunately, we have people in our society who feel like, look, you didn't work hard enough. You don't deserve to go to the doctor. You know, like that's 
that's kind of where this mentality yeah. is like where you know the whole i hate to get not not to get political but you know that's why oh, in certain places they didn't want to expand you know medicaid coverage and because it was like those people if they want health care they'll find a way to get it you know and even if we got to close a bunch we of hospitals, the history even of, if we close medicaid. a bunch of hospitals we're gonna go ahead and and we'll make our point that way yeah, instead yeah. of actually just taking the expansion and make sure people can or a doctor it. is not treating you based well, on all of that that's but tough. i ain't even gonna get into that that subject because that's that's kind yeah of touchy that's for that's me. very that's you know but it's just it really is a thing to where it's 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 a great like say somebody would you know we start the idea now and it goes in 20 years it could be a real thing because right. like i think that's where a lot of people would get discouraged if all of a sudden okay we're gonna do this union you pay one half or one percent of whatever that you make into this pot and it helps out somebody you know at the end of their life and like you're not seeing it work for you right now. So you get discouraged and you're like, man, let's not do that. And, but you don't realize that like, you know, rich homie Kwan's going to be in his fifties, you know? <laughs> and if he, if, yeah. if, if you'd have just paid into the union, you'd have been, you'd have been straight in 20 years. You know, we, we, in a, in a world of instant gratification, we don't say, see something pay off right here and right now. We were like, it didn't work. We don't realize the, the result. Too. Just like you said, the old man planting the tree that he's never going to see. see. Yep. Like the NFL union fight these cases from these old players. True. NBA players too. Yep. I mean, a lot of those, get messy uh, too, those players that were like in the M- ABA and NBA that are because they're, in that situation now to where they're looking for money. These organizations are fighting their cases yep. because the players, not to pay it. The players union is for current players not former union mm. so they don't they're not as far as they're concerned those people are outsiders asking for money i mean they supposed to have pensions post to essentially if, if you're in the union and you worked somewhere for a long enough time that comes with a pension and that pension is supposed to take care of you so well, if they're not paying out pensions sorry then yeah i mean it took you quite a i had to find a button man to, come on man it's all yeah. good you know these ads but anyway, popping up but uh, yeah. if if they're not paying the pensions and they're fighting the pensions in court I mean, well, yeah, that's a pro- you know, once again, that's the growing pains of of anything like this going that's, against the establishment of what we have. And it all comes back down to the root problem. Uh, yeah, it's capitalism. Capitalism. <laughs> I mean, it is. Shout out to Brad. Hey, I, I mean, Shout out to well, Brad. You have people, it, you, but it really it is. It really is uh, because, like, say like, someone can can afford ten Rolls Royces. Like, if you come to them and say, "Hey, can you can you just do it with nine? They'd be like, what kind of socialist are you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's how, that's really who, uh, you know, when you look at our. And that's not even socialism though. Like it's, it's not even like, that's not even what it is. There's just such a bastardization of what the idea is. Everything has to have a profit model. Yeah. And if it doesn't have a pro, you know, except the police and the military, no one ever asks where, what's the profit model for, you know, but when it's, if, if it's anything else that just benefits regular people, it's like, well, this is lo- like even the post office. They've it's it's t- people are like well, the post office loses money. It's like the post office wasn't set up to make money. Yeah, right, that's the difference. It's been set up to provide a service for people which is, and to make their you know get them their medicine on time. You which know, is, like, we which can't is, be thinking which about is a the profit way, model. Which is the way healthcare should be. Yeah, it's you know it's we pay into it. You know, all yeah. right. So we pay a little bit less on policing and destroying the world, and we pay a little bit to the people at home that are sick. Absolutely. Other countries do it all like, the time, like or a little less tax even. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> just a little, a little you know, less. I mean, there's ways we can cut back. You know, I mean, I'm just saying. Well, cut back to make it work. Well, but you see where they don't cut back, and see that's where the issue is. Capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> 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 military. Yeah. You, so, you see how like military they, they policing. Have, you know how in New York they're always going to find money for you know to pay overtime for the police. <clears throat> But you know, oh, they found money to bail out these banks too. But they're yeah. a good. But you say, hey, can we keep this uh, clinic open for yeah, sick absolutely children? Not. They'd be like, I don't uh, know. I don't know if we got the funds for yeah. that. Where are we gonna get that money? You know, yeah. what's the profit model for helping sick children? Yeah. Yep. That's the. That's that's it. I gotta eat breakfast yep. today. <laughs> I'm gonna help you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, loan it always comes back around to. It always comes back around to, to cap- c word. Cap- yeah, the c word. To the crazy c word because the thing in capitalism. Last thing I'll say is <laughs> capital is one job. Uh huh. No matter what job you work for under capitalism, it's to make the most money mm-hmm. with the least amount of labor, no matter what. And so no Apply matter Apply it anywhere. No matter what job you work for, it can be your homie, it could be everything. 
that the goal is always to make the most, most money, money without the least with the least amount of labor, and that's the driving factor. So no matter what, that's always on the chopping block. But this this so, is the thing I will say. Bernie Madoff was the king of that. Where we talk about <laughs> shout capital, the lo- shout the loan stocks capitalism. <laughs> I heard something. I don't attribute it to me, I, but I don't remember where I heard it from. Capitalism is great for things that you want. Yeah. But capitalism is terrible. Things that you need. You know, so I can go out like if I TV breaks tomorrow, I'm not going to take it to a TV repairman because I can get another 55 inch TV with smart apps and all this stuff for three hundred dollars. And yeah, as opposed to like maybe a few. Remember, everyone a few years ago would be like, "Man, I'm gonna go to uh, Best Buy on the night before or day after Thanksgiving, get myself a flat." It was an opportunity. Yeah, some people right. buy a new TV every year. Exactly, and so, but you know, when you talk Just about weird. insulin <laughs> and yeah. the fact that like there are people in you know who are who are against capping the price of insulin. Something that was sold a patent for no money, basically. Facts. And they've just been raising the price because they can. Yeah. Like, that's capitalism that's really going, you know, because those that's, that's what, a crappy that's human what being. people need. And then there are people who literally fought against $35 capped insulin. Yeah, you just trash if you, if you, <laughs> if that's your stand yeah, at this crap, point. You just trash. Because it's like if point. you've taken the money from people who want to charge, like, but once again, that's capitalism, isn't it? When somebody is like, no, see, if we if we can pay, if you could, if we can charge three hundred and fifty dollars for insulin, then that means we can put money into your political campaign. Wasn't that Screlly? What? Who's the dude that AIDS was the AIDS medicine? Yeah, it was. The, no, yeah. It was, no, no, it, it was, was insulin. Um, it was. I think it was insulin. No, it was. was it no, it was, was it no, it was, or was no, it AIDS? Medicine? It was HIV medicine. I thought it was I thought HIV. It was oh, insulin. okay, okay. My bad. My yeah, bad. He's got AIDS. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I could have swore it was insulin. I thought so too. No, this everybody, Pfizer, everybody want to charge them as much from insulin as possible, mm. which is free. You know, like I said, was was a real dirtbag thing to do because yeah. once again, they didn't they didn't pay anything. Look alone, I didn't pay anything for the patent. <laughs> and it was crazy. Did you remember when uh, Elon Musk thought that it was good to chart? You know, the verified stuff, and they yeah. made the, the fake Eli Lilly account that was like. We've dropped all the prices. Uh, there's no cap, or there's like no cap on insulin, and he's, he's like insulin is like fifteen dollars or something, something like that. And, and like, it drove down the price of the Eli Lilly stock. They, they lost like eight billion dollars in stock or something hmm. just from a fake eight dollar account or something. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Well, yeah, but anyways, America. Mm-hmm. That's what your eight dollars get you. Boosie commented on uh, Flex and said, "Stick to it, Flex. We need we need this band, B A N D." We need this band, all them rats. You just so, wanted to read that. Tweet. You just wanted to read. I did. I did. Uh, uh, stick a to it. Quote. Stick to it, flex. We need this band, all them rats. So he's out on six nines music being played as well. There was flex. a time that happened, like online culture, where people just decided to not use punctuation anymore. Yeah, and it really confused me for a very long time. Well, Twitter was, you mean? was part just, of that too, because you have, can only fit so many characters so in a like, tweet. Mm, but that's I'm true. not going to waste all that. Yeah, a, I'm a character on that. a comma. So, so yeah. re- reread this. Uh, this the boosie quote. Yeah. Okay, so it's, stick to it, flex. Period. <laughs> oh, sorry. Or okay, comma. Stick, or com- stick to it, flex. Period. We need this band. Period. All them rats. P- yep. Period. Three sentences. But he had no punctuation. So if you don't know any better, it's super confusing. Man, I'm confused. I don't know if he supports Flex or against him. I don't, think he, or, or him. I don't know. he definitely didn't mean I'm, to say I'm band. I he meant to say uh, band. Band. B-A-N-N-E-D. That. But I, it still doesn't make sense because stick to it, Flex. We need this band. We need to disband all them all rats. Them rats. We I need think, to disband. I think, I think <laughs> I Flex is that talking don't even about playing. A, I don't know. No, like where, I said, where, I don't, this is where he was going. Stick to it, Flex. We need to ban all them rats. I think that was the ban goal. Ban all the rats. But how's he saying ban ban all them rats? But how's he saying stick to it, Flex, when Flex is like, well, since the rules have changed, I'm just going to play the rats. He got to drop the D off the, the band. Is though, that, is that don't all need he needs to do? Either. Or any of this can be out of We there need two. So we're grading his paper at this point. So red mark through the this. Mm-hmm. Write the two at the top. Mark the D off the back of the band. Add punctuation. Add punctuation on them rats. And then so we gotta, we after, gotta, we gotta after, doing, after, after doing all Not of really. that. I mean, <laughs> stupid. I mean, it's it's, it's is more possible. coherent. Is he uh, saying? Uh, that's hey, what I was about to ask. Is he just is saying, it? hey, Flex, just uh, don't play any of them? Or is he saying, hey, Flex, just play all of them? No, I no think he's, he's saying, he's, don't play any of the rats. He's saying, don't play them. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I don't, you said passing, like, 
<laughs> what we doing? Like a C minus on this after I mean, all the corrections? If, if it's correct, if he had wrote it correctly, he would have got a C plus. But what are we going to do with this after know, all the red still, marks? That's still really bad grammar. I mean, it is. But he, he said had to, he's He would have had to add the punctuation too, though. I think it's just wild when you see people write the exact same way that they talk. Yeah. yeah. I don't like, know. I still don't know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah. Just like, I don't know be, what he's talking about. Like, there, there are times where, like, if you just played me uh, three or four boosty sentences, I wouldn't know what was going on, even though he's speaking English. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait. What? Look, they see, they corrected it up there actually <laughs> at the top. Oh, they did, yeah. We they, need, yep. we need, well, I don't need. It's confusing. <laughs> the whole this is throwing me off. Um, uh, Jermaine Dupree says, hip-hop is hurting and needs reviving. Oh, man. This dude was out here with an interview yeah. with So-so Vibe. So-so Def is out here in the news, ain't they? Man, they out here. Bow Wow, you got, man. got Jermaine Dupree. So he says, I feel, <laughs> I feel like hip-hop is definitely hurting and needs reviving. I have to go ahead and say this. For the last 20 years, Atlanta always had at least five or six of the top rappers at one time. Right now, Atlanta's dropped down to two top artists. Lil Baby and Future. He said, there's a lot of talent in the city still. I don't want anybody to screw what I'm saying, but the top tier. Screw what I'm saying? We were just having this. That's what he said. Is that okay. what he says? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Terry, is that what that say? That's what he said. That's what they. Uh, right. Why well, you say it like you wanted to be wrong? If we're using no. the red pen, it's skew. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, since we grading papers, you're right, yeah, Long. Yeah, yeah. He you know, said it, could I, be, it could be transcribed wrong. You never know. That could, might be what he said, and that's not what was written. People do mess is up. Is this like a tweet or something? No, this is it's like a quote. Yeah, this is a quote. They could have messed up. It up, man. But he, he's <laughs> he's saying, uh, but the top tier is where you have Ludacris, Jeezy, Two Chains, Migos, Future, Lil Baby. I mean, at one point, all of this was Atlanta. This is where all the top tier rap artists came from. He said, "I'm not, I'm not talking." But those aren't the same. That's not the same argument. You can't say hip hop is so hurting Atlanta and then say the hip. Hurting. Come on, man. That this kind of goes back to the conversation Thank we had about the East Coast being upset that they don't have the torch right now. Is the quote hip hop is hurting, or that Atlanta hip hop is hurting? Hip hop is hurting and needs reviving is what it says. So basically, so what he's saying is since Atlanta isn't how it's a quote unquote been, hip hop is hurting. Nah, that's cap. That's cap, man. That's 100 percent cap. That's really that's extra bias because just because the pulse isn't what you think it is for Atlanta, you you're just going to jump out and say hip hop you know is that hurting. Is? What's that? Atlanta capitalism. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to. Have a chokehold on it. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, also, long, with the least with the least amount of uh, least amount of work. Yeah, well, I mean, they mad that it, that Memphis is getting they shine right now. Yeah. I guess I don't know. That's a pretty big statement, man. Just because Atlanta doesn't have the, all the top rappers currently, that it's getting stale, quote unquote. No, nah, that's not. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's kind of that's, that's not how that works. That's kind of lame, actually. I'm not talking about artists that just make records, but number one songs, artists that people feel like define the game rap to me become a little stale but i never stopped making rap records he said as a producer people continue to want me to produce r&b records and he mentioned that him and currency got a project he kind of all over the place currency ain't from atlanta so i'm new orleans right new orleans new orleans i just think this once again this is cap you can get old and i'm not you're not saying yeah i'm calling him old And, and the thing is like just because you don't feel like you have your thumb on the pulse of the culture then there must be something wrong with it it's like there's just people out there you don't know about you're not you're not aware of it's just like that when you know people talking about how r&b is dead it's like no you just don't pay attention to what's going on and it's still out there it's not something that you listen to every day and you still listening to r&b from the 90s and you still being like man remember faith and and jodeci and new edition like I, I love all those artists, but there's love still them. people out here it's good who stuff. are doing it. And just because it's not right in your face right now, it doesn't mean it's so that it's the same. It's the same thing. I'm a JD fan. I, I first of all, I have no problem. Yeah, I'm a fan of JD. Yeah, I have no problem with JD. But this has nothing to do with that. But no, what uh, I'm saying, it has I'm, to do with the fact that like just because you know he and he talked about ludicrous and future. Like he talked about about <sighs> twenty five in 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 the people you know he talked about twenty five years of music. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So. You just got to understand that, like, the people who are out here doing it now, it's not, it's just not, just because it's not uh-huh. your face and it's not what you've been dancing to yeah. when you go out, it's because you're old. We've and talked, we've and also talked you about. In, still play the music that you like, and it's not, and it's from another era. Well, yeah, he said there's a lot of talent. About, in the city. Geographically, they're, 
the sound has evolved to where there's no borders on right. who's prevalent, essentially. So, of course, Atlanta is always going to be a hub, no matter what's going on. You can't take that away from the city, essentially. But just because they're not at the top of the game like you want them to be, does not mean that hip hop or rap is hurting in any way. And the only reason I the reason I said I fool with JD because I do think he's a legend and he's underrated. But he you is. also gotta be able to call a spade a spade. And this this is really like this is actually like arrogant that you think the pulse is that in like the pulse in your city is just that powerful to just put it all over hip hop. That ain't it, bro. Unless it's unless, just, it's, so, unless, unless it's a, missing. unless it's a really bad misquote. Could be, could be that, you know, yeah. could be taken out of context. So that we might happens have to a put lot. An asterisk on this conversation, yeah, it's, yeah maybe because because if he's talking about Atlanta hip hop, then yeah, okay, maybe it makes sense. But if he's talking about hip hop in general, then yeah, no. exactly. Yeah, that's I a good point. Going. And sometimes we, sometimes there's stuff that comes out and we say things and or read something, and then the I was misquoted, <clears throat> quoted, or something comes out to clarify. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because. I mean, he loved Atlanta. Now he always he always yeah, rep Atlanta as he should. But come on, man, over the whole culture, nah. You know, and Jeezy put out music this year. You know what I'm saying? Or not, yeah. in, in you know, uh, or last year, or la- last, last year. year. You know, 2022 rather. Yeah. You know, um, the end of the year. Where's Jid from? He's from Atlanta. He's from Atlanta. I mean, yeah, yeah. So just because Jermaine Dupree is not up on Jid. You know, that's again, that's a blind, that's a cultural blind spot he might have. Exactly. He said not right artists, up under your nose. He said artists. Not just artists that just make records, but number one songs. So to the point about Jid, it's like Jid had a dope album. Yeah, that Did is he have number one records though. Yeah, that's that's, that's absolutely uh, on some kind of elitist type stuff. Right, right. You right, want right, your, right. your city to have the number one at all times? And it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> Ludacris yeah. is from Chicago. At the end of the day, there we go. Well, that's true. That is true. Everybody else he mentioned was Brad's from, from Chicago as well. It sure is. Oh, so deaf, really out here. Bower huh? Wowers from Ohio. All right. All right, y'all. We appreciate the support as always. Newoldheads.com for all the education you need this year. This year. Did I almost curse? You did. Um <laughs> You see it, like it, subscribe, purchase, share, retweet, all of that. We really appreciate the support. Shout out to the chat. And we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Yep. In a minute. So long.